In this video, I'm going to show you very careful step-by-step -step instructions on how to replace the front screen on the Samsung S24 FE. Now, it doesn't look like it's physically cracked until you turn it in the light and you can see the OLED panel underneath the glass is actually broken, really broken. And you might also notice that the frame's slightly broken. I'll explain why I'm notifying you about that in a little while when we talk about the part. But for now, I've had this on the hot plate at 85 degrees centigrade for about 10 minutes it's nice and hot to the touch so we're going to remove the back cover and take all the gummins out of the phone i'm going to attach a suction cup onto the bottom third of the device and whilst carefully sort of levering upwards i'm going to add a few drops of isopropyl alcohol down at the bottom and what we should start seeing is a little gap developing at the bottom there you can use a razor blade to encourage the gap to sort of widen a little bit more and just pry it off a little bit just be careful and bear in mind that this is, I think it's a glass back cover on this one. So we've got the gap there. Once you've got that gap, chuck a bit more alcohol in it. Lifting up with the suction cup, we're gonna insert the plastic pick. And this is a lot safer. The pick's not gonna do metal on glass. Metal, I don't know if it's glass or plastic, I can't figure it out. But we're just gonna very carefully insert the pick about five millimeters and then run it around the edge to separate back cover from the mid-frame chassis. You get the idea as we're working our way around. We're just going to push that guitar pick. If you come across any resistance, to be honest, if it's warm enough, you can use a heat gun or hairdryer to get it warm too. But if it's warm enough, you should find that it comes away really, really easy. And I'm just feeling it. You know, I would say... A heat gun or hairdryer will do the job if you're doing a DIY job. Not everybody has a, 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 a hot plate. Remove that back cover, lift it off. If you've got an opportunity while it's warm to remove all the adhesive, then do that. Take advantage. We're going to replace that adhesive later anyway. I'm going to take it over to the workbench now where we'll take it apart a little bit more. The way that I'm doing this, because of the damage, the parts for this come either just the screen that you remove from the mid-frame or you can buy a slightly more expensive but assembled version it looks something like this so this has got the frame it's got the front screen attached it's all genuine parts and it's just easy to install just make sure if you are ordering this part make sure you order the right color because obviously the mid frame is different between models what that means for us is that we have to take everything out of this one and move it directly into this one to start doing that we're going to use the crosshead screwdriver. I've got this handy electric one and I'm going to remove every single screw that I can see. I'm not even going to count them because I can see that there's quite a lot. I'm going to get the top ones first. So that's all the ones on the top third of the phone from the top of the battery upwards. And then once I've got all these out, then I will move down to the bottom and get all the ones from around the charging port area too. Maybe we will speed this up, or maybe I'll take this opportunity to tell you to subscribe to my channel for more repair content just like this. I post a repair video like this every week, and I've also been adding some more entertaining or interesting content that if you are interested in tech or tech repair, you should definitely go and check out. So that's all the screws from this top half removed, I think. I missed one. Can you see it there? I think it just stuck in. I didn't I didn't not unscrew it. Use a little parts tray like that to store the screws. They're all the same, so don't worry about mixing them up. And then we're gonna go down to this bottom half where there's another eight or so screws. Did I say I was gonna count them? I don't I think I said I think I explicitly said I'm not gonna count them, so however many screws there are, you need to get them out. Sometimes you'll find that they don't stick to the screwdriver magnet. And that's just uh, how it goes with these Samsung ones. You just have to go back. Once you've got all the screws loosened, you can go back with some tweezers and carefully pull them out. Just like pulling teeth. There's like a metal shield here. There's a wireless charging coil here. And there's a plastic shield here, as well as these cameras just here. What we're going to do, we need to disconnect this guy first. So get that out of the way. And that will now allow us to lift this guy up. That's the wireless coil. 
it may be stuck down to this bottom part here we'll go ahead and lift that up too and we'll take it out as one big piece and just put it to one side moving back up the top that will allow us to now disconnect the battery meaning we've isolated power from the device and we can touch everything freely without causing any problems or short circuits i will now lift up this plastic shield at the top and that means all the shields are out of the way and we don't need to worry about anything getting in the way the ear speaker is also attached to this have a quick look at it because often it's dusty and it would be a good opportunity to give it a good clean you've also got the front camera at the very top here disconnect that because it can be awkward to get it out with the logic board as for the cameras we're going to leave them attached to the motherboard as well as this connector just here for the main board and this one for the antenna just here what we can do though is move down to the bottom and disconnect the one for the screen which is the display cable just here there are two more crosshead screws what we need to remove these are different from the other two so just be aware when you're putting these back that these were the two little black screws they're different from the main screws that we used you'll also notice that we've got this little fingerprint sensor it's up to you how you remove this but i would advise leaving it connected to the, the board and just using your tweezers to carefully lift it out of its positioning just there with that removed we can carefully pry upwards just here use this point here don't go hard at it and you just want to lift it out and then that's that sub board removed with the fingerprint sensor still attached so with that loose we'll just leave it on top move back up to the top of the board and we will very carefully remove this screw here don't forget that i had somebody very angrily email me earlier saying that i didn't include a screw that was included in the board just beware there may be more screws check over the board first before you try and pull anything out another good place to look is the sim tray which i've not removed just yet make sure that you get that out of the way before you try and pull the board out because heavy hands do lots of damage take that out put it to one side and now we should be able to remove the logic board now word of warning i'm not responsible if you break the motherboard taking this out just be careful lift up slowly if you find that there's resistance then it means that something is probably holding it down and you should stop look and have a find of what is obstructing it remove the obstruction and then try again repeat until you've got the board looking something like this out of the phone all right because we've already loosened this guy down here it means that we can remove the board and the cable all in one piece we don't have to mess about disconnecting things because Disconnecting things for DIY people will cause problems when you're pushing it back together. It's often a pinch point where people break stuff and then blame the guy who makes the video about it. It's not my fault. Put this to one side and then we just need to get this battery out. Samsung have made it really easy for us to remove these batteries nowadays. All you have to do is pull on this one. Usually it says A or B. If it does say A or B on this one, it doesn't. Just do A first, then B pull upwards with the pull tab these are usually really really strong and allow you to remove it in one piece just like that you may need to use some strength and some grip strength you may need to get an adult to help you if you are a child attempting it at home yourself but you will get it out like that if you've got some crinkles on the back take a plastic tool like that one something flat don't use metal to do this don't use a blade and just iron out any of those creases ready to reinstall the battery into the new housing one final part that we need to take out is this guy here this is the vibration motor and usually there's a little prime spot in this case it's just here get your tweezers under it and it should just pop out like that usually the adhesive is still attached to it and in this case i can see that it is we'll just reuse that adhesive now this is the new part. As I discussed before, all the stuff that we've taken out, we're gonna put back in. All we're gonna do next is do the steps that we took to take it apart in reverse. So we're gonna remove any plastic films that are in the way, and then we're gonna install the battery. So this has got an adhesive for the battery already installed. So just lift off the film, use some tweezers if you need to, and drop the battery straight into the phone. Push down on it apply some pressure make sure that it's stuck down and it won't come out easily that's in 
Next, we are going to go up to the top of the phone and we'll line up and install the board. Same as taking it out, make sure there's no obstructions. If there's obstructions, remove the obstructions and make sure that it sits flush and nicely into this new housing. It's designed to fit perfectly. If it doesn't fit perfectly, don't force it. There's, there's a reason what there's something stopping it. That's, that's how it goes. Next, we're gonna go for the camera, line that up, reconnect it. And if you want, depending what order you wanna do things, you can put this guy in and then we'll just leave that on top push it down, probably put the SIM tray back in as well. Not a direct reverse order of what we've done, but somewhere pretty close. Moving down to the bottom again, we need to just lift this up because we didn't put that vibration motor in first. Put the vibration motor in, apply a bit of pressure just to make sure it's stuck down. And then we're gonna drop the board in place. Dropping the board in place is pretty easy. Placing this down, drop the charge port in first and then very carefully push it down until it sits flat. You can now push the fingerprint sensor back in. And remember, we've got those two black screws. I've just remembered something else as well. You'll probably be already be on my case about it if you're observant. Get these two black screws in and then I'll give you a chance to uh, figure out what I've done wrong. So those two screws in, I'm going to connect this so you've got another minute, you've got another minute and then I'll, I'll admit when I'm wrong, reconnect this guy. It can be a bit awkward to line that up but it connects like that. Let's just quickly go back up here because when I was picking up those two black screws I realised I missed a screw, that was what it was, look. There's a screw here that I forgot to put in. Silly, silly me. Now I'll put that back on. But now I'll re I'll continue down the bottom. We've got the two black screws, make sure everything's plugged in, connected, and it's all good. We'll push that down, just like that. And then we'll get, I think there was about eight or so screws holding that guy down. Just go ahead, pull the lug everything in. Reconnect. I keep saying plug and reconnect, but what I actually meant is screw it in. Screw it on down. Maybe we'll fast forward this bit because I am, if you haven't noticed, running out of things to talk about. But I think you get the idea. There's a lot of screws, a lot of connecting, a lot of lining things up, and a lot of negating responsibility from me to you. Reconnect the battery now. We're back up the top, sorry. I'm moving quite fast. I do apologize. I usually do this a bit slower, but I'm rushing because I want to go home. Push that down, reconnect this guy just here. And then you guessed it, we've got more screws that need to be screwed down. But don't fast forward this bit because I'm going to talk about something really, really important. The parts that you see us use today came from a very good supplier, Mobile Centrix. At first, we actually ordered the OLED only, the screen. But then when the customer brought the phone in, we noticed that it was damaged and that's when we managed to get the one with the mid-frame. They were very kind enough to just accept the part that was unused back as a return. And they make returns so simple, it's easy. I know some people like to return every day or whatever, like as soon as they've got a faulty part, they'll send a return back. We, we keep a pile of stuff because we, we do get returns, it happens. And then we just send it back, like once every few months, once we, once the box is full, really. Um, so every few months, we just send everything back. And like I know for a fact that that part will just sit there, and then it'll go back in a few months' time, and there'll be, no, there'll be no dramas, because they just accept stuff back. It's so easy. Enough of me talking about our friends at Mobile Centrix. It would be a good time now to turn this phone on, although I think it might be out of battery, because it looks like we're out of battery. Let's plug it in whilst I fix this back cover back on. There we go. That's all I need to see. I'm happy. At this point, you get a seal. It looks like this. These cost about three quid, between three and five pounds. And what you need to do, peel off the back sheet, make sure that it lines up this way and not onto the back, back cover. Line it up in one of the corners, follow it around the edges, apply pressure around all edges, being careful not to touch the cameras. Blow a bit of dust at the camera if you, uh, sorry, blow a bit of air to remove any dust from the cameras. And then that's 
just about ready to stick that back cover back on. What you want to do is a quick visual check of this back cover because in our case, we've got a bit of glue and stuff still left over. We'll use the isopropyl alcohol to give it a good wipe and make sure we've got a nice surface for the new adhesive seals to stick to. Otherwise, it'd be a solid waste of three pounds just to get a seal what won't stick. You might as well use pretty stick. Right, that's just about ready. I'm going to peel off the top layer of this film. That came off really easy. That was nice. Give it one last blow. Don't forget. Do the back of the lens as well. Dust gets around. Trust me. Stick it on. Turn on the phone. So I left it on for five minutes on charge and it has charged up. I guess it's probably been turned off a little while, this one which is often the case when we get stuff in for repair, especially when they're not the cheapest phones to repair. So, yeah, job done. I'm happy. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.